don't care what you think of me. Your opinion of me does not matter at all. Well, you got to know your heart pretty good to be able to say that. Be careful what you speak. Ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, ex-wives, ex-friends. They are speaking negatively about you. But don't join in. Protect yourself. Cover your tracks. But be careful what you speak. Because you are empowering negative behavior. I believe that some of the worst pain that we experience in life comes from people falsely accusing us and judging us. When they don't know us or they don't know anything about us and they don't bother to find out, they just take a look and have an opinion. How many of you have ever been hurt deeply by someone who judged you and criticized you and you just thought, you don't even know what you're talking about? Well, one of the best ways to keep those kind of things from happening to us is not to dish it out to other people. Who are you to judge? God has a job to do. Let him judge. Who are you to judge? You are being judged for judging. We all have to speak upon negative things and negative people, but try your best to pray for your enemies. Try your best to speak positivity and hope and saying, you know what, I don't like what you're saying and I don't like what you're doing, but I'm going to continue to pray for you. I'm going to continue to hope and speak blessings and opportunities in your life because maybe you're bored. That's why you continue to just sit around and do and speak negative things. They say is power in the tongue. So if you have power in the tongue, if you continue to speak negative things about people that are doing negative things to you, you are empowering their negative behavior you'll notice that that negative behavior won't go away. If you speak it, someone will be it. So, who are we to judge? We shouldn't judge people, we should help them. And there's probably nothing more we can do to live a worthwhile life than to help people. To help other people and in helping other people, I promise you will be rewarded and you will be helping yourself too. We see men tested beyond anything we can imagine. And still they overcome. Overcome the pain and the suffering and the fear. And yet we can't get ourselves out of bed in the morning. We can't move toward a goal we've set for ourselves. Don't allow that. You remember what you are capable of if you mobilize your will. And if you keep moving forward, you keep advancing. Remember what you are capable of if you keep attacking and don't stop and don't stop attacking and don't succumb to the suffering and the pain and the fear don't succumb but instead move forward and attack don't litigate over how much you have a right to have what I got because until you suffered what I suffered floated through what I floated through, survived what I survived. What you see on the outside is a reflection of the conflict on the inside. I could go home now. Going through your life, saying, what do you see? Going through the trunk of your car, through your garage, through your house, what you see on the outside is a reflection of what's going on on the inside. We never have enough information to judge anyone. I want you to remember that. We know what we know, and there's a lot more that we don't know than that we know, usually about every individual. It's interesting to me that nobody ever judges me or nobody ever judges you if they have what you have. People only judge us when they don't have what we have. And so therefore, it's not even really, really what the word prejudgment is all about. It's just jealousy. 
And they're not even mad because you have it, they're mad because they don't have it. Remember, be a student, not a follower. And here's what you must always do. Design your own personal life. I'm very happy for people to take notes of my seminar, but I'm also just as happy if somebody says, hey, this is not for me, tear up all these notes and throw them away. Th that's just as valid for me. Remember, be no one's disciple. Chart your own course. Make what you do the product of your own conclusion. What I'm saying here is be your own person. You don't have to be a model of someone else. You don't have to do it like anybody else, right? Do it like yourself. Buy what you want to buy, listen to what you want to listen to, make changes if you want to make changes, and don't make changes, right? It's your life, I'm telling you. And don't let anybody persuade you any different. Success is not a stereotype. But when you continue to speak negative things, about people that have done negative things to you you are also continuing the cycle of negativity you are speaking negative things into their life therefore you are inspiring the negativity to continue if you speak positive things into people that have done wrong by you especially if they're continuing to do negative things to you and on your behalf you are therefore trying to speak a positive transition from them being a negative and horrible person you are trying your best to speak positivity into their life so that they can now start becoming a better person and a more positive person it goes back to the saying pray for your enemies Most people in a fearful situation, they forget everything and run, but there are few that in a fearful situation, they face everything and rise with courage. And that's who you are. And when you're going outside of your comfort zone, it takes courage. Most people, the majority of people, die within their comfort zone. They're not risk takers. They go through life trying to play it safe. There's no safe position in life. There's no safe position in life. You can't get out of life alive. You got to die to leave here. And so this is the time. Success is the continual unfolding of the design of your own life and pulling it off. That's what success is. The continual unfolding of the design of your own personal life and pulling it off whatever degree you wish that is success successful in doing whatever you want to do that makes sense to you for you your family your responsibilities or take on responsibilities or refuse responsibilities that's strictly all up to you we've been given the power of choice every life form except human beings operates by instinct and the genetic code has no multiple choice. Only humans have multiple choice. In the winter, the goose flies south. Why? Because he's a goose. If you said to the goose, it'd be better to go west this year, he, he ignores that advice, keeps on flying south. Why? Has no alternative, has no other way. He is only driven. All life form is driven by instinct in the genetic code, except human beings. Now, why not human beings? Because here it is, we've been given the dignity of choice. We're not like a robot. We're not stuck like a tree, using up all the nourishment, nothing left, now you die because you can't change location. Not true. Humans can go north, south, east, west. Humans can change, do anything they want to do. We've been given the dignity. But here's what's interesting about all life form except humans. Every life form except humans strives to the max of its potential. How tall will a tree grow? as tall as it possibly can. You never heard of a tree growing half as high as it could. No. A tree grows as high as it can, drives down every root it can, produces every leaf it can, extends itself as far as it possibly can. Every life form extends to the max, except human beings. Now, why not human beings? Because we're not robots. We've been given the dignity of choice. And here's a couple of alternatives on the dignity of choice, to be part of or all of. 
you have the potential to be. And you got the choice. Do a little to make yourself comfortable and forget the rest, or do it all. And there's nobody here to dictate you got to do it all. That's nonsense. You got to be rich because we live in a rich country. That's nonsense. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to do it all. You can do a little, do some, do some more. Take advice, but don't take orders. Take information, take training, take teaching, but don't take orders from no one that tells you how you need to live and what you need to own and what you need to do. Somebody says, well, you need to be successful. That's a personal choice being successful. What we teach is the possibilities, the possibilities, and everybody chooses. Take a little, take a lot, do some, do nothing, ignore the subject. You've got to learn to do that. Abraham Lincoln said, since I would be no one's slave, I will be no one's master. Excellent philosophy. If a guy says, hey, I'm soon cashing it in, I'm heading for the mountains, I'm going to live in a little cabin, live off the land, and feed the squirrels. If he goes and does that, guess what? He's a smashing success. Why? He's doing what he designed to do and went and did it. He pulled it off. You can't say, no, no, that, that's not successful. That is the epitome of success. It's giving a design to your life and go pull it off. Making progress in that direction that satisfies you. If it doesn't satisfy you, make alternatives and you change. And if you get some better ideas, sure, you may follow someone's suggestion and ideas, but not orders. Design your own life like you want it that will fit. Now, if you take on some responsibilities now, you got to consider those. Yes, you can ignore your responsibilities, but you won't feel good about that. Guess what the old prophet said? Some things that taste good now in the mouth turns bitter later in the belly. So you don't want to sacrifice. We all must suffer one of two pains, regardless of your choice of lifestyle and what you want to do. We must all suffer one of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Be very careful who you judge at their low moment. You might be judging somebody right now for the battle that you're about to fight next month. Be very careful how you judge people. Be very careful how you say, oh, well, I just don't understand people who are depressed. After all, there's so much to be grateful about and rejoice in the Lord always. And yes, yeah, cool that you've got a Pinterest kind of faith right now, but something might happen in your life that knocks you off balance to the point that your stable self becomes a little bit wobbly for a little while. And you're going to want to make sure that you haven't judged people for things that you don't currently struggle with because it might happen in your house. Amen. It creates conflict because it does not crown when you have been placed in the position, it crowns before. You're rich before you got the money. You're educated before you got the degree. You're a preacher before they ordain you. You're a husband before you find the woman. If you're not that before, you won't be after. So you have to go through a period of displacement where you have vision to function on a level and don't have opportunity, which creates frustration. Because you say, I feel this with everything I got inside of me, but nothing outside has acknowledged me on the level that I think on, and you don't feel appreciated because your thoughts are up here and your situation. Woo! Do you hear what I'm saying to you? And what we suggest to everybody is to consider the disciplines because disciplines weigh ounces, regrets weigh tons. You don't want to substitute a, a discipline for a regret. In our opinion, that would be a poor choice. Now you can do it. But some things are poor trade-offs. The old prophet said, what if you gain the whole world, but it cost you your soul? Would that be worth it? With a bit of intelligence, we say, no, that doesn't seem worth it. Even if you got the whole world, if you traded your soul, that experience would be so bitter and so awful and so devastating, it wouldn't be worth it. What if you got some gain by greed instead of legitimate ambition? I'm telling you, it might taste good up front, but it's going to turn bitter in the belly. And a bit of that advice saves some people from devastation. Say, well, you're right. I better think twice about that. So we must confront all laws, spiritual laws, agricultural laws, basic laws, fundamental laws. We must confront all of those. But you still now can design your own life a little, a lot, go east, north, south. 
Don't put yourself in the straitjacket of something that's not to your choosing and not to your liking. Now, if you really want the prize, you know, to you know, become a multi-millionaire and run a company, fine. Then you got to pay the price. But hey, it, it's strictly up to you. There's no requirements here. Where is it written? There is no law. The key is to try to design your life. Yes, you might try something and say, hey, this cost me too much. This, I'm away from my family. I'm gone. So this is valid. Little girl said to her, Mommy, he said, Daddy never plays with me. He comes home and he's got this briefcase and he disappears and works on his papers and tells me to go to bed. And she tried to explain, said, look, your father loves you very much, but he's so busy at work. He can't get everything done. He has to bring it home. She said, why don't they just put him in a slower group? If you haven't got time for your kids, you should consider a slower group. It's not the money. It's not the success. You got to make sure everything works. Not something at the expense of everything. And this something at the expense of everything uh, turns out to be too costly. Life in its best and most fulfilled, I think, is a balancing act to make everything work. A mother's got the challenge, a father's got the challenge. And all of this imbalances, you know? Even the tug of war and, and trying to make it work as husband and wife with, you know, a little different concepts. Guy's a baseball player and he gets four or five million dollars a year and his talent takes him right. 185 games, whatever the games are that they play. That's a pretty tough one to do, gone most of the time. Should he go where his talent leads or should he, should he work at the bank from nine to five? It's a challenge to try to fit, compromise, make it work, make all systems work so you don't sacrifice everything for something. And it's all a dilemma. She says, go conquer the world and be home by five o'clock. And he says, well, that's a real challenge, right? But if you've got partners now, it's, it's this combination of working it out. But let me tell you what, it can be worked out. Here's what happens if you ignore it. It just gets worse. You just got to confront and say, let us work it out so that we bless our life with all of the systems that furnish us with a good life. And guess what? It never ends, this trying to balance your life with everything. Getting in charge, mastering the situation, this is the big challenge. I remember some companies I started years ago. I'd start the company, I'm running the company. First thing you know, the company's running me. And along about that second year, I say, hold it, hold it. I used to be in charge. <laughs> and now I'm out of control. I used to have it on the run. Now it's got me on the run. And the same is true whether it's a company or an enterprise or whether it's it's the day. The key is you, you just got to take charge and say, I'm going to start getting a handle and taking charge of my day and not let it get out of control. Because it's so easy to be persuaded and distracted by, you know, things that use up time, take up time. And then first thing you know, it's it's all out of control. Here's the key we've all learned. Maybe we just need to be reminded. It's not the hours you put in. It's what you put in the hours that can. Guy comes home at night, exhausted, falls into the chair and stop and going, going, going. Here's the key. Doing what? Here's what we learned. Don't mistake movement for achievement. Busy, busy, busy. That may not be the deal. It is the doing what that's the deal. Some people are busy all day long doing figure eights. I mean, you know, they're not making much forward progress. Keep coming back around where they started. Learn to set goals so that you have some priorities. Priorities, constant review. Make sure it's what you really want. Let it change, do whatever it wants to change. Learn to separate majors and minors. Here's something that requires minor time. Here's something that requires major time. Is this all helpful? Wow. I'm excited about sharing, seeing if it'll create some value for you. Instead of finding fault in others, we should all work to be the best people we can be and identify our own strengths and weaknesses. In other words, before we judge someone from our own viewpoint, we should take the time to take a very close look at ourselves, because none of us are perfect. If you make it to the end of this video, just write on my timeline. From this point on, I will be careful of what I speak. Then I'll know you made it to the end of this video. And I want you to share this video. Why would you watch this video 
be inspired by this video and decide to keep it to yourself. From this point on, I will be careful of the negative things I speak. I love you. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. Doubtless. You can't have no doubt. You can't have no doubts. I'm not talking about other people believing for you. You got to believe this for yourself. Being successful is not a magic trick. You just have to learn the principles of success. I am telling you, your education ain't got nothing to do with it. It's your dreams and visions. A man without a dream and vision should perish. Now, when you going to ask him for it, and are you going to wait for it to happen? Or are you going to lose faith? Well, I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. Who are you? How you know what God's will is? It all happens at an appointed time, but you have to stay in faith for the appointed time to happen for you. You've got to sell yourself every day on your abilities, on the goal that you want to reach. You can learn all the techniques in the world. If you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen for you. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day you will begin to see a difference in the things that you're doing. Telling yourself every day, here I go again, and I got what it takes. This is my day, and nothing out here is going to stop me. It's possible to finish something before you start. In fact, it would be a bit foolish to start until you had it finished. So human beings have this remarkable ability to finish something and then start. We've heard the old expression, don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Say, no, we have the ability to count our chickens long before they're hatched. Because we know, we have faith, we believe. We use the law of averages. There's, there's bound to be at least so many out of every dozen, out of every hundred, out of every fifty. So it's possible to see the end, then begin. Start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, where you would like to go, the person you would like to be, and see if you can't get a better picture of the finished objective. See yourself there, see yourself in possession of. I was in business with Bob Cummings, the old movie star for a while. He said, decide what you want and then act as if you already had it. And being an actor, he could give us a few tips on acting. Decide what you want and act as if it was already yours. Now, the reason we can act thinking that it's already ours is because not only can we vision the end results, we can also vision the beginning of making it real. So we don't start till it's finished, but it is possible for human beings to finish something before they start. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except humans seems to operate simply by instinct and the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice of something that might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one. I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No. 
No, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. Are you letting your circumstances talk you out of what God put in your heart? Now you've quit believing. God still wants to bring it to pass, but you have to get in agreement with Him and say, God, I still believe it can happen. The odds are against me, but I still believe I can accomplish my dream. I was raised in dysfunction, but I still believe I can set a new standard. Thoughts whispering, you'll never beat the right person. You can't pass that college course. If you start dwelling on it, these problems are so big. I don't see how it can work out. Before long, you'll be negative. Don't take the bait. Those are lies to try to defraud you out of your purpose. Do yourself a favor, ignore it. Just say, no thanks, I still believe. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You can never lose faith. When you don't see no way how, you have to buckle down and keep believing. God is always coming. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do. Simply because you didn't design a better destination. Key phrase, up front, the decisions are easy. Sometimes after we've lived a few years now to repair our mistakes and get back on track, seems like a tough job. If you've messed up your health for 10 years, I'm telling you, it takes more than 10 days to get it back. But here's the key, and it's so exciting to talk to the teenagers. Make the note, if you start early, the fortune belongs to you. If you start early, all fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late and still arrive with some good treasures and some good things. But when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired and too weary and too ill and say, look, I don't have much time left. It's not going to happen for me anyway. It's easy to take that attitude. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years. We've got the time the next 20 years. We've got the time the next 30 years to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's going to change everything. So five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place, a place of productivity, a place that'll make you feel good about yourself, a place that'll give you honor and respect. A place that'll give you influence to touch other people five years from now that you couldn't do today. Where will you be in five years? Key phrase, we go the direction we face. We go the direction we face. If you start designing something at the end of this direction, sure enough, you will start going the direction you face and we face the direction we design.
Don't get talked out of what you're believing for. You had every right to give up. The setback should have talked you out of it. You haven't seen any sign of things changing. All the facts say it's impossible. Your attitude is, that's okay. God can do the impossible. Don't get talked out of your dreams. The disappointment is not going to cause you to get discouraged. The people who don't believe in you is not going to dampen your faith. The environment you were raised in is not going to stop your destiny. Your time is coming. What God put in your heart is still on the way. Guess how quickly you can change your health by starting to eat an apple a day. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say you've been ill long enough. And you've had health problems long enough and you say, that's it. That's over. I'm going to now start a program. You don't have to really revolutionize your whole health life. Just start with an apple a day. You say, well, is it that simple to change your health life? And the answer is yes. The key is just to start. You know, you pick up a book on good health and you get halfway through the book and it says, now, dear reader, set this book aside, fall down on the floor and see how many push-ups you can do. And then it goes on to say, and if you have not done that, why not give this book away? It looks like you're not going to do it. Come on, you don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. And an apple a day committed to finally having a health program that will make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years. All you got to do is munch on that first apple and nobody even has to be around you and you don't have to announce it to the world. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's going to make me so healthy. I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. Munch, munch, happy, happy, self-esteem off the scale. Now. If you eat an apple the second day, you become almost delirious. Saying, wow, I'm on my way. Somebody said, just two apples? Says, look, you don't understand. Not only did I do it yesterday, I've done it again today. This is really proving to myself with no audience, no microphones, no nothing, just you and yourself. You've convinced yourself, I'm on my way to the healthiest I ever have been. I'm starting a new life. This is the second day I'm on my way. That's how easy it is to change your life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. And maybe by health or by whatever other things we can think of to do, you just get back on a better track. Okay? It's a small journey to changing direction. We find ourselves when we discover our purpose. Nothing is better than for a person with a plan for his or her life to find themselves. Find that purpose. It does not matter where you sit. It does not matter what you have, Lord. But if you don't have purpose in your bowels, you cannot do what God has called you to do. It's what makes you solid. It's what makes you secure. It's, it's your mooring. It keeps you just exactly where you need to be so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. To discover your purpose, to find yourself. What a wonderful thing. That's what our subject is about today. And if you don't have the tough, tenacity, God-anointed, purpose-driven life, you will give up and walk away. But there are some of us that have nothing to walk away to. If it's fight, we just got to fight. We're like the woman with the issue of blood. If I have to crawl to get there, then I'm getting on my knees. I still got to go. But there's a second challenge. Once we find our purpose, discover why we're here, there's a second challenge that we have that we face, and that is to lose ourselves. And, and we lose ourselves when our purpose becomes bigger than us. It, to find a purpose, how important. But then to take that purpose and place it in a position with people that has eternal factors involved 
is to lose yourself and to go to another whole level of life and another level of living. Very few people find themselves and lose themselves. Place that purpose in a position that is so much bigger than us that we can literally lose ourselves in the process. In a time of change that's taking place around the world, in a time when people are feeling a great deal of anxiety and fear and reservations about the future, at a time when people are going to work and don't know whether or not they will have a job when they get off, and not necessarily because of their performance, but because of what's happening in the economy, at a time when there are challenges more so than ever before in personal relationships, that many times I'm sure that we've all taken time just to stop and reflect many times when we hear what's happening in the news or read the newspapers. And so I think that now more than ever, we must begin to look at what are the things that we can do will enable us to do some things and use some powers that we have that many of us go through life never ever discovering that we have those things going for us. And part of that, I believe, is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? Because once you find that, it puts you in your power place. See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. And if you don't know what it is that you showed up to do, if you don't know why you're here, I encourage you to find out what your purpose is here. What is the meaning of your life? Once you identify it, you have to invest in it. You have to support it. You have to put yourself in an environment where you can shine. So the first question we have to ask ourselves this morning is how do we find ourselves? That's challenge number one. And we find ourselves by when we discover our purpose. The world is such, so full of apathy. It's so full of average. A person with passion always stands out. It sets us apart. It sets us above the crowd. So once you have passion and once you have a, a sense of energy in your life, it just sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It already gives you what I would call a head start in success in life. There are way more followers in the world than there are leaders. Never assume people think of you the way you think of yourself. What perceptions are you creating? If you're going to put these negative perceptions out there about yourself, at least be conscious of it. I'm saying that we have to work through the challenges of life in learning how to begin to work to fortify ourselves. I can live my dream. I can find my purpose in life. I deserve more for myself. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. Why is it that most people don't pursue their dreams or don't do better than what they're doing if they're capable of doing it? I think that many of us don't go the next step because we don't know what to do yet. And I say that, that the reason that we don't even explore the possibility of what to do is because subconsciously we don't believe that it can happen for us. We don't believe that we deserve it. So let's talk about it. Never assume people think of you the way you think of yourself. Once you decide to put these perceptions out there in the universe, if you're not content with the way most of the people think of you, now you're on a mission to change those perceptions. When you change those perceptions, people are going to either decide to roll with you or not. You have been blessed with so many gifts and talents, natural gifts, that if you unleash everything that you're capable of doing on the world at one time, it's going to be overwhelming. It's going to be too much. You are a gift from God. You have so many talents. If you drop too much on people at one time, it's going to be overwhelming. There are going to be plenty of times in your life when you're not happy. There might be years. And so it's a shallow boat in a very rough ocean. Happiness is something that descends upon you. Everyone knows that. It comes upon you suddenly. And then you should be grateful for it because there's plenty of suffering. And if you happen to be happy, wonderful. Enjoy it. Be grateful for it. And maybe try to meditate on the reasons that it manifested itself because it, it can come as a mystery you know you, you don't necessarily know when you're going to be happy something surprising happens and delights you and you can analyze that you can think well i'm doing something right i'm in the right place right now i've done something right maybe i can hang on to that maybe i can learn from that what you should be pursuing instead is you should be pursuing who you could be that'd be the first thing 
It's like, because you're not who you could be, and you know it. You have guilt and shame and, and regret. You berate yourself for your lack of discipline and your procrastination and all your bad habits. You know perfectly well that you're not who you could be. And God only knows who you could be. And so that's how you should be strive that's what you should be striving for. And associated with that, you should be attempting to formulate some conception of the highest good that you can conceive of, that you can articulate. Because why not aim for that? Your life is short and it's troublesome. And perhaps you need to do something worthwhile with it. And if so, then you should do the most worthwhile thing. Figure out what that is for you and to dispense with those parts of you that are unworthy. And then maybe, if you're fortunate and you do that carefully, then happiness will descend upon you from time to time. And that's the best you've got. And then also perhaps during sorrowful times, the fact that you've strengthened your character and that you're aiming at the highest that you can conceptualize, that'll give you the moral fortitude to endure without becoming corrupted during those times. So here's what I'm suggesting. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast you have to literally run to stand still, I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Dream, and I'm here to tell you, there are a whole bunch of you out there. You're adding value to the dream of somebody that you're working with. You're making a difference. So your purpose may not be just for personal use. It may be for corporate use or collective use. It may be bigger than you. Does that make sense? Passion. But the second question we ask ourselves is, not only what am I passionate about, but what are my strengths? What am I good at? What is my spiritual giftedness? Because when God created you, he gave you gifts spiritual strengths to enable you to find and fulfill your purpose disciplines undone in the future give us poor results discipline managed well gives us good results we're affected by our dreams our vision of the future you want to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future some people live in the past and let their life be continually pulled and influenced by the past. And yes, we must remember the past and review the past to make it useful to invest in the future. Make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. If you're skimpy on your dreams, that isn't very well planned, then it doesn't pull very hard. Then you have more of a tendency to be pulled by the past or to be pulled apart by events or circumstances. So in order to save yourself from being pulled apart by distractions or pulled back to the past, you want to now start really designing the future so that the greatest part of your attention and pull, like a magnet, pulls you forward into the future to accomplish your goals. Goals are like a magnet. They pull, and the stronger they are, and the more purposeful they are, the bigger they are, the stronger they pull. If you have excellent goals, here's what they also do. They pull you through, pull you through all kinds of down days, down seasons. They pull you through distraction on every side that says, look here, look here, look here. Strong, powerful dreams like a magnet pull you through that. Some people get swallowed by the disaster because they have nothing on the other side of the disaster to pull them through. At the other side of the difficult time, at the other side of the down time, if you've got plenty out there to attract and pull, it'll pull you through all these things. And very little of it will attach itself to you. You'll be able to get through some of the most difficult times if you have this spectacular vision ahead of you of where you're going and what you're going to accomplish. Getting through will be easy.